Hey guys, Kit here of Burn One. Finally, coming back to you with the Toronto Regional Report. If you haven't already heard, uh, my team won first place. Uh, it was a pretty fun run, and I'm just gonna go over the matches really quick. Um, I've been out of town and really busy with work, so some of these matches might I might not be remembering correctly. I'm kind of referring back to my notes a little bit. Um, but I'll do the best I can. So we'll just get into it. There was a six round tournament with a cut to top eight. Uh, the day was like pretty sad for me. I did not want six rounds because we drove out over there and we were planning to drive back the same night. So adding the extra round just like cost us like an extra hour, hour and a half or so. But anyway, getting into the rounds, uh, round one, um, I played against contact collection from what I remember. It was, uh, Blue yellow, I believe, with the Shimikaze level one plan, uh, and then going into the level two that searches out and then end with Musashi's and stuff like that. Um, this game, I totally punted as hard as possible. I just dropped everything. Anything that could go wrong went wrong for me as far as me making correct plays and stuff, especially towards the end. Uh, my opponent actually misplayed during one of my attacks in the final turn which they played the compass counter and did all the actions for the compass counter before I re finished resolving standby. And they kind of just like did it really quickly after I triggered standby. So they blanked out my attack. And at that point it was, uh, they were blanking out the attack to my scene on level three, which I was planning to restand either way to ditch a bunch of climaxes out of my hand before refresh. And what happened there was um, because of their misplay, I thought, I was like, oh, I might as well just play over this character because I already know it's not doing any damage because if you play over a character using standby, then you lose the attack normally. So I did that, and then after I did that, I realized my mistake and then wasn't able to kill him that turn, and I immediately died the next turn like the idiot I am. I felt like horrible after that. I felt like I let my team down really badly because that was a really dumb misplay on my part. Um, but either way, I just pretend that round never happened anymore. So like I was saying, it was a five round tournament. <laughs> um, so round two, I played against Konosuba on uh, the team we played against. I think, uh, some of their team members were fairly new to the game. Uh, I played against what for the most part seemed like a uh, Mega Moon waifu deck. It just had a bunch of good magic stuff in it. Uh, won that fairly easily. I just walled them out and they just couldn't handle with my field had. Uh, round three, I hit up against someone that was playing a uh, fake coin flip build, which was uh, pretty exciting. Um, my opponent kind of fizzled out, though, because he wasn't able to assemble the pieces in his hand while dealing with my field. And there was not much to say. He wasn't even able to get the combo off, I believe, once. Maybe he did once at level three, which is at that point, it's kind of useless. So um, won that game. Uh, going into round four, I played against Contact Collection again, but this one is the Abyssal Fleet. I do not remember much about this game. All I remember is that um, I think I misplayed once without thinking. I forgot that Hoppo's Climax combo can target things in the front row because I never see it that often. So I was supposed to play one extra character that turn, but I didn't, thinking that he had no targets. So it killed off one of my characters with Hoppo's effect, making it so that my 1-1 Xenon didn't have a hand on core and power that one turn, which kind of screwed me a little bit, but not really. Um, ended that game, if I remember correctly. Uh, I won fairly easily as well. Uh, I, like, Conti's in, or Abyssal's end game is not very scary at all. Uh, next, what is this one, too? Uh, Round five, I play against the, uh, Attack on Titan. Uh, my opponent, uh, decent player, uh, just did the usual anti-Attack on Titan stuff. I shut off two lanes, so they couldn't plus in two lanes. And I think in this game, there was the only time he could plus was against a level one bomb, if I remember correctly. Uh, my opponent really didn't plus. I forced him to play all his uh, maneuver gears during his turn instead of during attack phase where that's when they want to play it the most. Um, because of that, uh, they hurt their hand size a lot, and I was able to kind of stop clocking by the time I hit, hit close to level two. Uh, I just brainstormed the rest of the game, and uh, they I don't even think they got me cost level threes off, if I remember this game correctly. I could be a little bit wrong, though. Uh, but the AOT game was pretty easy. Just did the standard anti-AOT stuff. Uh, next round after that, I believe this is round six, I played against Sword Art Online. 
Um, they were playing a standby build. Uh, it was not the variant I was playing for the tournament. It was one that incorporated a little bit more blue, playing the one zero Kirito and stuff like that. It's a version that I think I played around with a little bit early on, and then I just ended up cutting it because I was focusing more on the English meta. I think in Japanese, like those card picks are completely fine. I mean, even in English, it's pr completely fine as well. It's just I don't think they do as much in English as it does in Japanese because in Japanese format, um, there's just so many viable decks you don't have to worry about, like just hitting really bad matchups because of certain things like that, where the main focus in English right now is if, if your deck is able to beat the AOT matchup, then your deck is decent enough to like top at tournaments. Um, this game, too, uh, was really funny. This game... Because we both knew each other's decks, what we were doing and stuff, uh, I kind of pooped out my 3-2 Xenon and during the same, or not Xenon, um, Asuna support. And during the same turn, I hit a standby, so I played another Asuna support. So I was kind of ahead, or I felt like we were pretty even for the most part. I think I was ahead in damage-wise. But the second I did double Asuna back row against my opponent, uh, they kind of locked them out of the game because they weren't able to really reverse any of my things and all my things in the field already were overstated and overleveled, so they couldn't even side for damage very well. It was just them kind of running in over and over again, if I remember correctly. Um, after that, we went to Top Cut. Uh, top Cut, there was a really long deck check in between, which really sucked, but um, interesting enough, first matchup I played against uh, was OG Love Live. This game was pretty weird. It's like just one of those games where like everything that could go right for my opponent did go right. And then my game was pretty no cancels for most of the game and then just die at the end. Luckily, um, during the last few turns of the game, when that really mattered the most because we we're pretty even, um, my both my uh, teammates already won. So I kind of just threw the last turn or two of the game because it didn't really matter the outcome because we we're moving forward. Uh, but I think if that game did, uh, if I did was playing to win that game, it was probably going to be really, really close. There was a time where my opponent refreshed with six climaxes, and like the deck was like 40 cards or something. He it, it was really bad for him because he was paying out all his stock and everything every turn, so he had like no stock built generation at all. Um, he his field was always dying every turn and things like that. Uh, what happened though was after he refreshed, he brainstormed when he had three stock left. He like brainstormed, hit three of the six climaxes, and then searched out three of the one zero. I believe it's an, uh, I, I forget her name, the blonde hair girl. I think her name's uh, Ellie. Uh, yeah, Ellie. Um, her climax combo with gold bag, which is like top check for add music to hand, discard the rest. Uh, you try filled, uh, try filled that and had the climax in hand because he was only refreshing with six. Or maybe it was even five. It was just a really low amount he refreshed with. And then, like, off his, f his first refresh, he basically forced himself to refresh almost again. Uh, I remember attacking the next turn, and double can and he double canceled. And I was like, oh, this is one of these games, huh? Where, like, just even though my opponent was in a bad position, like, every out that he could possibly hit, he hit. And it, like, landed perfectly. Uh, so it was kind of unfortunate for me. Um, so we move we advanced that round. And then um, our top four match, I played against Ryan Wibberley. If any of you guys know him, uh, he's a pretty good player uh, based out of Toronto. Well, for some reason, I thought he was on the West Coast this entire time. I played against his team. Um, the matchup, I played against, uh, I actually played against him, so he was playing Attack on Titan. The match was somewhat even-ish for a while. And then I think around level two, like the mid-level two game or whatever, uh, I just got, I got like far ahead. Or it was like right when he was transitioning into level two, I got far ahead. And then the following turn after that, he just kind of took nine damage straight, which I was not expecting, and lost. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll take the win. It, w it wasn't like an amazing game, but yeah. Uh, after that, we moved on. We advanced to the top two. Uh, once again, I played against Attack on Titan. Um, did the normal things attack I need to do against the Attack on Titan matchup. I try to shut off two of the lanes to avoid my opponent from being able to plus in multiple lanes. I think he got one plus off that entire game from the combo, maybe two. And at that point, um, I just swung for damage. Uh, my opponent couldn't really, couldn't really do much. Uh, early played Xenon, double strike with Xenon, I believe. 
and closed up the game with double strike Sinon uh, in the center. I believe the play I made was um, I played Sinon, and then afterwards I played uh, Silica level 0 to top check, and I looked at the top card, and it was a climax. So what I did was swing with the center Silica or Sinon first, which was, I believe, in an open lane. That or it was fighting like a level 0 or something. And then um, since I know there's a climax on top, I paid one ditch to uh, mill the top three, hit the climax obviously, so it restands. I swung for three. I think they were at originally at uh, three one when this happened, so I hit them for three. Then I went to three four. And then I swung immediately again with the scene on, and then they were at. Uh, they took the next three and they just died. So that's how I closed out that game. And then I believe everyone else on my team won their matches, and we took first place finally. It only took. Three salty road trips, or two salty road trips to finally win one of these events. Uh, I have a few more coming up as well. I believe I'm going to be in the New York Regional um, and the Houston Regional. And supposedly there is an Ohio Regional as well. But I there's still like no information out there. At least during this recording, I did, haven't seen any of it posted anywhere. But supposedly there's going to be one in Ohio uh, sometime in June, I think. So if that's the case, I'll be going to that one as well. Um, there was talks about going to California, but I think we're going to have to pass on that one because I hit some financial sadness uh, over the weekend when I went to SakuraCon in Seattle, lost a lot of money, so I cannot easily make these trips um, to the West Coast, and I want to save some of my money and stuff for flying out during single season uh, to other venues and stuff like that for uh, next season, I think the fall season or whatever. Uh, besides that, um, as you guys most of you know, I was playing the AOT build I showed on my channel. Uh, well, there was one change though. I did change out one Kirito Brainstormer, uh, played in one of the new Asuna Brainstormers. It did help in one of the matchups when I needed a counter for sure to make sure I could win the matchup. Um, it was able to search out the counter. Um, I don't know how much more I'm going to be tweaking standby Sal, uh, so you guys can run off with it and try whatever you want and let me know how, to, how it works out for you. Uh, but probably heading forward, I won't be playing Sal anymore, finally, because there's just too many other sets that are actually uh, pretty viable that I do enjoy. Um, besides that, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this report. And then, as always, uh, see you guys in the next video. Later. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoy our channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe as it does help our channel grow. Or you can reach out to us at any of the following social media links below. See you guys in the next video.